Hey, this is Steve Shaw for AcrylicPouring.com, and in this video I want to show you how I like to seal my paintings. I kind of go a little over the top. I like to seal my paintings with two-part epoxy resin. Now, it's kind of expensive. It's more work than just using a spray sealer. Um, smells kind of bad, and uh, yeah, there are some dangers with uh, having some pitting and stuff involved. If I haven't scared you away by saying all that, um, stick with me and I'll show you how I do it. Most people seal their paintings with um, something like Mod Podge, which totally works. It'll give a nice little coating on there and it'll give you some a little bit of protection from UV and if, say, something spilled on it. Um, most people, and I've done this before, will seal up a painting using basically clear spray paint. It's clear acrylic spray. Um, you can get it at the do-it-yourself store, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, that sort of thing. If you're gonna use one of these, um, do it outside, and you wanna put on probably three or four thin coats. Don't overdo it, read the directions. It'll usually say you put on a thin coat, and uh, 10 minutes later you can put another coat. Um, do that, don't overdo it. Four thin coats is better than trying to do two thick coats and have it buckle up or do something weird. Um, I've also used this a couple of times. It's a Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Glaze, and it's just a little bit thicker than some of the uh, other acrylic sprays. This works great too, and I'm just gonna be totally honest with you. Unless you're trying to sell your paintings, just spray, just do the acrylic spray on top of your paints. It's gonna make them all shiny, it's gonna give you a good amount of UV protection, which means your paintings will last a long time if the sun's hitting them, and it'll just make the colors really rich and bright. Now, when you use the uh, two-part epoxy, it leaves a nice, it's not a sixteenth of an inch, but a nice thick, it looks like glass is on top of your paintings. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful, and it's just hard and thick. If something spilled on this, you could just wipe it right off. But um, to me, it's just that that's what stops people. People will see my paintings, and then the first question they invariably ask me is, what did you seal that with? And it's two-part epoxy resin, and it just looks great. Um, here is a painting without two-part epoxy, without any kind of sealing at all. You know when your paintings look so great the uh, when you first make them, and then you come back the next day and it's kind of the colors have dulled or kind of faded a little bit? Um, well, putting a coating on there, whether it's the spray or the epoxy, that's what's going to bring those colors back and give it that vibration and beautiful, beautiful make the colors sing again. So um, let me show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to move the camera down so you can see step by step how I'm going to do it. And uh, let's get these paintings sealed up. Thanks. We have chosen to uh, this painting, one of my favorite paintings from the uh, the poured landscape series that I did um, to use for my demonstration. And I really want this to look great. So instead of just sealing it with the uh, clear acrylic spray, I'm going to do my two-part epoxy. Um, first thing is... Um, I need to clean off the surface because sometimes when you're adding silicone or you're adding having additives into the paint it'll leave a little bit of oil on the surface and when epoxy or even the spray hits that it will pull away and leave what's called bald spots or craters so you need to clean off the surface so you're gonna need to get a paper towel and something to clean the surface with um, you could use something like Windex um, I think for today's example, I'm going to use the stuff called uh, Totally Awesome Spray. It's just a general purpose cleaner from, uh, from the Dollar Tree, actually. So, let me clear off my area here. I'm going to spray a little bit on the surface. And I know what you're thinking. Um, when I first did this, I had a little heart attack when I thought about putting liquid on top of my paintings. But I'm not leaving this on for very long, just for a few seconds. Um, Grab a paper towel and don't be stingy with your paper towels. Um, I'm just going to rub back and forth. A little circular action here. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see really nothing came off of the, uh, the paper towel there. So I'm going to wipe around the edges. If you wanted to, I guess you could do this two or three times. Um, but I've gone over it once. I'm going to get a clean paper towel now. Lose a little bit of pressure there. Press a little harder. It's really frustrating when you try to seal these things up and your, uh, your spray or your epoxy resin just kind of pulls back and leaves like a little circle on there. It's not the end of the world, but um, it doesn't look great when that happens. So the, the fewer of those you can have, the better. 
All right, again, a little bit of color has come off here, but not much, so nothing to worry about. My painting still looks really, really good. Now, the other thing, you don't have to do this, but this helps uh, make things look really, really finished and kind of professional. On the back, let me put a paper towel down underneath here. Um, on the back of my painting, I originally put in my push pins, right, um, to hold it up. Um, I, what I wish I had done was put my little layer of tape down first. Now, first off, you don't have to put a layer of tape down. Um, what this tape is going to do is eliminate little drips because what's going to happen is when this epoxy resin that goes on, again, it's going to go on like pouring syrup on there. That's about the thickness. Um, it's going to come back and leave drips where gravity has pulled it down on the edges. Um, not the end of the world. Most, almost all of my early paintings have those uh, drips around the edges and really not a big deal at all. But if you really want something to look professional and nice, you want to be able to, to uh, get rid of those drips. And this is how you do it. This is blue painter's tape. And I'm putting this, this all around the edges. So any drips that come down the sides of this painting will kind of hang off of this blue painter's tape. And when I pull the blue painter's tape off, the uh, little drips will go away. Alright, now I'm going to put my four push pins back in again, I'm not bothering to try to line up the same holes or anything. And four, okay. Alright, tape is on the back, push pins to hold it off the surface. And I am now ready to mix up my two-part epoxy to add, to pour and brush over my painting. All right, I think we have everything we need here. Um, one of the most important things you're gonna need for sealing up your paintings with epoxy resin, a pair of gloves, put those on. You're also going to need a paintbrush. Uh, almost did well of a of a house painting brush this is a little bit smaller than what i usually use uh one little t uh, hint bit of advice take your brush pull at these bristles before you get started that way any loose ones will go ahead and come out now rather than come out in your painting oh and actually one two three five came out just then so i'm going to get rid of those now with epoxy resin you can buy it in different amounts i actually buy mine by the gallon um, you are not going to have to do this. You can buy it at, uh, in much smaller quantities. So, but I buy it by the gallon because I have uh, eight paintings in the other room that I'm going to be sealing up after I'm done with this one. Um, as far as the amount of uh, epoxy resin you need, you're going to have to do a little bit of math. You're going to need to measure the. You need to get your square inches as far as the uh, of your area. So this is a 12 by 16 painting. I did a little math on the side over here. That's going to be 192 square inches. Now, I can't tell you how I came up with this, just over time and, and mixing and experimenting. But what I do is I take the square inches, the total square inches I have on a painting, and divide it by 70. And that will tell me how many um, ounces of epoxy resin I'm going to need. So for this, I have 192 and let me do this alexa what's 192 divided by 70. 192 divided by 70 is 2.7429 so i need 2.7 ounces of epoxy resin i'm going to round that up to three so this is a three ounce cup keep in mind we have to put equal amounts of the uh, two-part epoxy that's why it's called two-part epoxy so I'm gonna fill um, I'm actually gonna do a little bit extra because I know I have some extra paintings in here I'm gonna fill this up uh, almost to the top and then I'll fill up a second cup with the other uh, epoxy mix almost to the top and then I'll put them into a third cup and then I will mix them up okay grabbing my hardener so you have a hardener and you have a regular liquid um, just pouring this in again I mean, as long, the main thing is that you get equal parts, 
and it doesn't have to be exactly exact, but it should be pretty darn close. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my cup into here. I'm gonna take a craft stick and just kind of scrape the edges to get it all in there. I could reuse this cup. Um, in fact, I am gonna reuse this cup. There'd be, I think a lot of people would tell you to go ahead and use a second cup, and, and that's fine. I just like to conserve when I can. All right, so the first thing I put in was the hardener. The second thing I'm gonna put in is, um, is the actual epoxy or the resin. And I'm gonna fill, this stuff is thicker than the hardener. This is like pouring, I don't know, super thick honey. It's just thick, 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 thick. All right, a little more in there. Cool. Again, this is gonna be three ounces, a total of six ounces, which is more than what I really need um, for this size painting, almost twice as much, but that's okay, because I've got another painting I wanna fill in there. And if you're dealing with, uh, when you buy it in small, smaller quantities, it'll be marked and easier to mix too, but always follow the directions on whatever container you have. All right, done with this cup. I'm just gonna put it in the trash. I now have, um, five maybe six ounces of, of hardener and epoxy in resin in here now i'm going to mix it up you real this is probably the most important part is mixing this up um i believe the instructions say you need to mix it for a full two minutes so the uh, editor of the video is probably going to speed this up but i'm going to ask alexa to put on a two minute timer for me alexa set a timer for two minutes two minutes, two minutes. and i'm just going to start swirling around really long time and it felt like a long time too. Uh, main thing is you really have to get this stuff mixed up. So hopefully you saw me, I was scraping the edges, I was getting down across the bottom, but this is our two-part epoxy. It is a liquid right now, but in an hour or so, it will start turning into a solid, like super hard plastic. So I'm gonna scrape my stick off. And from here, this really, all the hard work is done. I'm just gonna pour a layer across kind of back and forth. All right. And then I still have plenty of it in the cup. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna start putting it on here. I am gonna need to get to uh, down on the sides, but right now I just wanna get a good coat on. You don't have to be particularly neat. I'm, right now I'm going over the edges. Again, I feel like I need to talk to you about the quantities that you mix, but the more you do this, keep kind of keep track of how much you mixed up, and you'll know if you've mixed up too much or too little. Um, it's always better to mix up a little too much than too little than to try to pour one layer on and then hurry up and mix another batch. It's just better to have a little extra. And the directions usually say also to uh, don't try to use every last bit of your epoxy um, just because sometimes this, that last little bit that you might be scraping out of the bottom um, might not be as well mixed as the rest of the uh, epoxy that's in the middle of the cup. So leave a little bit in the cup is what they tell you. And I try to do that. You remember I've got my taped edges, so any drips that come down later should come off, should get on that tape, and should come off when I do the, uh, when I pull the tape off. Again, we're just covering this with a, like a layer of syrup. Okay, I'm gonna put this back down. I, if you tilt your head and look at it at an angle, you can see uh, the, it'll reflect the light differently and you can see if there are any spots that you have mix, missed. Once I get a good coat on there, I like to just barely run the brush across the surface. You can see I had a little extra. My brush was loading up with the resin, so I was putting it back in the cup. And you can already tell, it just it brings these colors back to life as if the paint was wet. I just love that look. It's 
Sometimes if you mix, you'll get uh, some bubbles in there, and we're gonna hit this with a torch in just a moment, and that'll get any, the warmth that will get those bubbles out of there. Wow, this looks really good. And right now I'm tilting my head to the side and looking, and so far, if you, none of the, uh, I'm not, I don't have any bristles in the epoxy, and also I don't have any bald spots in there, which is really nice. Okay, I'm gonna put my brush down for a moment. Um, you need to do this in a well-ventilated room. Uh, I'm in my studio right now, and I will probably move this to another room where there's a fan where I can blow some of the air out, because um, it does stink up the house. My wife gets kind of, not angry, but a little frustrated when she comes home and the house smells like epoxy resin. So be considerate of those around you and try to set up a fan system, something that will, uh, Blow that stink outside. All right, got my little torch. And just like you would torch your paintings, we just want to stay a couple of inches away. And all this does is it heats up that resin, that epoxy resin, just a little bit. And any air bubbles that are trapped down in there should just come right up to the surface and bloop, go away. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to over um, explain. That's it. You need to make sure it's level. I'm going to leave it here and I'll come back and check on it in 30 minutes. Maybe come back and check on it again in an hour. Um, but it should be sealed up bulletproof. And once it's done, um, I'll come, we'll come back in a, uh, later today and it sh this should be hard. Right now, this is just super sticky. You don't want any bugs around it. You don't want your dog around it. You don't want your kids messing around with it so keep it in kind of a safe place and uh, we'll come back and check on this later okay here we are it's been 24 hours um, I'm gonna lift this up tilt it around there's gonna be some glare on it but there is a beautiful thick layer of what looks like glass on here totally clear and that's the beauty of the two-part epoxy it's just gorgeous and it makes all of your colors all of your paint look like they're wet I've had people walk up before and be afraid to touch it because they thought the paint was that was wet so this is just beautiful on the back to finish this thing off you can see there's a few drips that have come up with the epoxy resin the drips will gravity will bring those down but they're on the blue tape so let's pull out our push pins So here it is on the front, here it is on the back, got a few little more cleanup, a little bit more cleanup to do back there but not much. This um, hang, in a nice little frame or hanging on the wall is going to be absolutely gorgeous. So again, don't be afraid of using two-part epoxy if you really are curious and interested and you want to try it. Go uh, buy a small amount of it and mix it up and give it a shot. Um, otherwise though, most people are not going to need to go to this extent but it is incredibly beautiful when you do. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And you'll be able to see most of my work, uh, which is for sale at my Etsy store. So just go to Etsy.com and do a search for Steve Shaw. And my store name is Art by Steve Shaw, all one word. Thanks.